Hello and welcome to my Kiln Floor 2 SDK tutorial to the very first one where I'll be setting up the SDK for Kiln Floor 2. So where do you find the SDK? If you go to your Steam library, go to Tools, and if you scroll down you'll find Kiln Floor 2 SDK. I already have it installed, but if not you should do it. And you can also favorite it so you don't have to keep scrolling all the time so it appears on top. Another thing you could do is right click, go to properties, and disable the Steam overlay because, from my experience, when it comes up, it causes the game to crash. Well, the SDK, it's not really the game. Uh, the first time you load it up, the splash screen might take a few minutes to come up. It takes a while for the first time use, apparently, but it will come up hopefully and just be patient um, and this warning message it is normal it comes up every time but it doesn't really deter it really doesn't hurt I guess it's an SQL thing basically it won't load all your assets so you have to do that manually anyway so this is what it will probably look up look like when you first start up. It shows content browser and the startup tip. Uh, feel free to read these. You can turn them off if you want. Um, they actually show some really good starting tips and hotkeys. So I'd recommend reading them if you want. Uh, so the content browser. I will show you later how to make use of it. But in regards to the SQL asset warning that came up earlier. What I'm indicating is, uh, for example, if you go to KF Game, Boot PC, Packages, and Environments, and Environment Modular Static Set, you can see there's four packages underneath there. But when you click on it, it has nothing to show, even though your filter shows, you know, show all. And that's because it's not fully loaded. You have to right click, go to fully load, and once it loads everything, you can see everything that is within this folder. Well, we'll get back to this later. Uh, so, first off, uh, you might have seen some other tutorials where they had four windows, and you wonder how do you get to that? Well, there's this find button over here, restore viewport, and that will bring it back into the four viewports. This viewport is considered the, the perspective because it's like a 3D game while uh, these are all 2D and they're called orthogonal views so this one you can change which ones they'll show by clicking on it um, or right clicking to show all the menus with the hotkeys for them but currently S means from the side so you're looking at it from the side F is from the front and T is from the top. And since it's only showing the Builder Brush cube, it looks the same on all of them. Okay. Uh, if you don't want all four windows, there is an option to change it in view, um, viewport configuration. Instead of 2x2 two two split, you can have a 1x2 split. Or you could have 1x1 one one horizontal or one by one vertical and you can change which one is to your right, which one's to your left. You can even drag it around. I prefer the four by four myself or the two by two I mean. And then just maximize the one that I'm currently using. And if I need to get more precise, then I'll minimize it and make use of the orthogonal views. Um, one thing I would do is set your grid because Tripwire does something different in the original UDK it goes by powers of 2 so 8 so 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32 is supposed to be 64 then 128 then 256, etc. But they're going by a base 320. 
So half of 320 is 160, half of 160 is 80. And then twice 320 and twice 640. So th this is w what their modular set is based off of. So I would recommend putting it on 320. Make sure you toggle the drag grid. So basically anything you drag on to the SDK will snap onto the grid. Um, for the angle, I usually keep it at 45. If I want less or something more accurate, I can either toggle that off or make it smaller. But I find 45 with the, the modular set works out really well. A um, couple ways to open up The content browser. There should be a open the content browser button in the toolbar. You can also click Control Shift F. You can also go to View Browser Windows Content Browser, and it will all show up there. And from here, you can find all the assets that you need. Something else to keep in mind: uh, using the mouse to navigate um, in 3D perspective. If you to navigate with the left mouse button held down, you will act like you are on a glass ceiling like a ninja through the sewers. The yeah. Or a ninja in the vents crawling around. Uh if you hold the right mouse button, it'll act like you are tied down and you can only turn your head. Um, if you have both right and left mouse button held down then it will act like you just smacked into a glass wall and you are you can't go forward or backwards but, but you can scoot around. Um, or the other way is so that was the way with the mouse that most people used to navigate the SDK but now in UDK3 there's this other option in preferences flight camera controls you can use WASD for camera controls um, you can either have it all the time only when the right mouse button is held down or never use it uh, I prefer the middle ground so I can use some of the shortcuts that involve WASD but I really like being able to fly around with WASD. So when right mouse button is held, you now you can look around and you use WASD to strafe around and it looks and feels a lot like what I'm used to in the first person game. Um, another option is over here is your camera movement speed. So if you click it then it changes pictures and the l less blue it is, the slower the camera speed is. You can also right click and you can see all the options. And so, very fast camera. Um, so, right mouse button held down. And if I use WASD, I fly all over the place now. Oh my goodness. It's, it's very useful for large maps. I'm going to be on a small map, so I'm going to make it really slow right now, more fine-tuned and detailed. Okay, uh, when naming maps, make sure to add KF map onto it. So, let's say we want to save this map. So, save current level, and then ask you where you want to save it. By default, it will be in your documents folder. It will be in your name, documents, my game, Kingdom for 2, KF game, unpublished, rude PC, maps. <clears throat> and then this is where all your maps will be. And when naming it, uh, it's a good habit to name it starting with KF hyphen. That way, the Kingdom for game knows that this is a KF map rather than the KFO or endless mode or whatever that they add later on. So just click 
quick save. I'm going to write over it, but you can just make your own. Um, we're going to add on to that file later on. Anyway, I believe that should be it for now. In the next video, I will try to be showing how to use the modular static set.